Today's reading scripture is Romans 8, 12 to 16. So then, brethren, you are under obligation not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For you all who are being led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. After Golden Light Choir's praise, we will watch the voice and guidance of the Holy Spirit, 17th session. Most parents tell their children to study hard, wash their hands and feet when they come in from outside and eat a well-balanced diet. But the children do not normally understand why their parents are saying those things. However, as they get a little older, they understand their parents' intentions a little better, they understand they said things like that because they love them. But knowing why does not mean they are ready to obey all the time. Also, even though they are willing to obey, they might not, might not be able to obey because it's difficult to change their old habits. It's the same when we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and obey. As you hear and learn the Word of God, you can understand the voice of the Holy Spirit to some extent. But even though you hear it and know it is for your own good, you cannot obey it unless you are willing to obey it. So this is the last key to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly. It is the willingness to obey. Deuteronomy 10.13 says, To keep the Lord's commandments and His statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good, for your good, it means keeping the Lord's commandments and statutes is happiness. But many people don't. Whether they're going the other way around toward unhappiness and they believe they're pursuing happiness, this is totally wrong. Keeping God's commands and statutes is real happiness. How well are you obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit that is given for your own good? This is the last session on the voice and guidance of the Holy Spirit. If you have been listening to this sermon series carefully from the first session by now, you must be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit at least to some extent. If you can hear clearly, that it would be better now. I urge you to have a willingness to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of the Lord that by doing so, you will enjoy true happiness as children of God. Brothers, brothers and sisters, in order to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly, I explained that you have to cast away tr untruths from the heart. You have to cast off untruths from your heart. How easy all these words are. Anyhow, you will have to cast off untruths someday in your believing life. So the sooner the better, isn't it? As I told you many times, uh, the untruths motivate our fleshly thoughts. The fleshly thoughts block the Holy Spirit's voice or confuse us in discerning the voice. Fleshly thoughts hinder you from hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit or made you confused between the voice and your fleshly thoughts. Is this the voice or the thought? You can obey only when you are sure that you are hearing the voice. 
but you're confused whether it is the voice or the thought, so you cannot fully obey. The stronger our fleshly thoughts, the less likely it is that we will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Eventually, we will follow our own thought, which more precisely speaking is following the guidance of the Holy enemy devil and Satan. But as we learn from the word of truth, we can discern to some extent which is the Holy Spirit's voice and which are the fleshly thoughts. The voice of the Holy Spirit leads us to follow the truth. We can reduce our fleshly thoughts and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more clearly to the extent that we cast away untruths from our heart. Secondly, the untruth motivate the desires of the flesh. The untruth get the desires of the flesh running. I said as we learn the truth, we can discern between the voice of the Holy Spirit and fleshly thoughts to some extent. But many believers do not obey the voice even after discerning the voice correctly. It's because they are not willing to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. They don't obey because they don't want to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. In particular, it's because the desire to follow the flesh is greater than the desire to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 5.17 says, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. Let's now talk about what fleshly desires are and more specifically what kinds of effects they have on us when hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Simply put, the desires of the flesh are the things that the flesh wants to do, the things that the flesh wants to do. Here flesh is not just a physical body of man. Flesh is the generic term referring to the natures of untruths revealed by actual deeds. Flesh is the genetic term referring to the natures of untruths revealed into actual deeds. You have learned about the flesh, the flesh before, didn't you? Thus, the desires of flesh are the characters that try to reveal the untruths in heart as manifestations of outward actions. The desires of the flesh are the characters that try to reveal the untruths in heart as manifestations of outward actions. This desire of the flesh goes against the desire of the Holy Spirit. For example, the Holy Spirit tells us to love even our enemies. But if we have a strong desire of flesh called hatred, we don't want to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit when we see somebody we hate. We, own, we wouldn't want to look at him through the eyes of gentleness. We, we would want to stare at him and speak bluntly. We feel like we would feel better if we could just criticize him without with piercing words. There are such people, aren't they? Some people regret after they do that, like I hurt the other person's feelings. I should have held it back. Well, they're kind of good in heart. But those who feel good after they all call names, have hot temper, speak harsh words, and speak bluntly, their hearts are no good at all. They are far away from goodness. They feel good when they speak harsh words to others, as they feel the same when things go wrong for others. Let me give you another example. The Holy Spirit tells us to pray without ceasing. One day, it's almost time to go to Daniel prayer meeting, but today, 
You want to watch TV some more, get some rest, and go to bed early. You want to do the things which give comfort to your body. The desire to follow flesh is the desire of the flesh. Brothers and sisters, now, in order not to follow the desires of the flesh, what do we have to do? Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Well, easy, right? Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. All you need to do is just walk by the Spirit. But the problem is, you don't want to do that. Do you? It's very simple and easy. As written, what we have to do is just follow the desires of the Holy Spirit all the time. Whenever we hear the voice or receive the guidance, we can just follow it. Since I was young, I respected and loved my parents. Since I was young, my father, I respected and loved him. I was very proud of him. And my mother, too. So I just obeyed them. I was the last man to disobey the par parents. Of course, they always told me to do good things, no way to tell me to do bad things. So I was raised well to be an obedient man. There was no such thing as saying no or being sullen or running away. I just obeyed them. I became so thankful for that because I was raised that way. I couldn't do, I could do the same way to the Word of God. I totally obey the Word of God. I totally obey the Word of my parents. Then, do I not obey even the Word of God, the Almighty? I fully obeyed His Word in my Christian life. So I became thankful to my parents once again to make me become a child of obedience. When we hear the Holy Spirit's voice or whatever I was inspired to do, we can just follow it. As we keep on following the desires of the Holy Spirit, desires of the flesh will become increasingly weakened and then finally disappear. It is the result of the untruths, which is the source of the desires of the flesh, being removed from heart. But is there anybody who says it's difficult to obey? Of course, you may feel it is difficult to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit only at first. It's because two kinds of minds struggle against each other, namely the desires of the flesh and those of the Holy Spirit struggle against each other. This struggle is the fiercest in the second level of faith. In the first level of faith, there is hardly any struggle. At the first level of faith, most people follow the desires of the flesh, just like when they were unbelievers. They don't know the truth well. They don't feel the need to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. They don't even discern whether they are sinning or not. And they don't even know the fact that they should not be sinning. So they are always arguing and not attending Daniel prayer meeting not giving the whole tithes unless the others let them realize they lead their believing lives without knowing enough. So there is nothing to struggle. Of course, those who have good inner hearts will diligently obey the word. They hear as soon as they accept the Lord, but these are rare cases. Most believers begin to strive to live by the word of God as they get to the second level of faith.
because they have listened to the word and have come to know about heaven, hell, and judgment, they try to obey the word. But because they still have old habits, it's not very easy for them to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit all the time, of course. If they do not lose the fullness of the Spirit, they can easily pass the second level of faith. But because most people do not keep the fullness of the Holy Spirit, they have to go through the struggle in their heart. The point in time when the struggle is the fiercest in the second level of faith is when the truths and untruths are half and half. This is the point when the desires of the Holy Spirit and the desires of flesh have this even strength. Let's say you are doing boxing. If you and the opponent are nearly equal in skill, then you have to fight fiercely. If the opponent is weak, it's not that big a deal. Say a world champion and a mere amateur are having a match, match. though they're in the same weight division, it's simple, like one punch. The game is over. It can be a match. Nothing hard, nothing tired. Romans chapter 7 vividly describes this kind of struggle. Romans 7.15 says, For what I am doing, I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I would like to do, but I am doing the very thing I hate. Here, what I would not, what I would like to do is what the Holy Spirit wants. And the very thing I hate is what the flesh wants. Namely, the desires of the flesh go against those of the Holy Spirit to lead us to act in untruths. Romans 7, 21 to 24 says, I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully conquer with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. Fleshly thoughts and the desires of the flesh are the sinful natures combined with the body. Raised man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? When the desire to follow goodness and the desire to follow evil struggle against each other, you feel afflicted in heart. But you have to overcome this difficult moment. You have to overcome this very moment. Most people face this moment. If you overcome this point and just go into the third level of faith, it becomes much easier to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit. At the beginning of the third level, the two desires might clash with each other, but soon you decide to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit. But many people become tired at the second level of faith. According to the individual difference, the struggle lasts from a couple of years to five years, ten years or more. As the struggle continues, they have troubles in heart, so they feel a Christian life is difficult. They know life in faith is to cast off evil, but they store up more evil as they lost the fullness of the Spirit. They again take up what they had cast off before. They ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit repeatedly, and they might commit sins leading to death. As a result, the works of the Holy Spirit becomes increasingly fainter in them. Even though they listen to the word of truth for so many years, they can remember those words in their lives. They heard they had to be meek, but they get angry over even the smallest matters. How good humbleness is. 
how good it is. Become a man of humbleness 100%. Then you can hear the voice of God and communicate with Him. If you are pure in heart and humble, I mean 100% humble, then you can hear His voice and you can communicate with Him. Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. That's why he could see God. They know it is truth to seek others' benefit, but they cannot hear with the situation where they face a loss. They learn that uh, they should lo love their enemies, but if there is anybody who gives a hard time to them, they pay back with evil. They live just like unbelievers. And finally, the works of the Holy Spirit in them stop completely. Likewise, if you take fleshly things only because it is difficult to struggle against your flesh, it will only make the struggle last longer. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life are the reinforcements for the desires of the flesh. Brothers and sisters, even in the marathon race, there is an end. Even very long tunnels have an end. There is an end to your process of casting off the desires of the flesh. The time of that end depends on your decision. Today, tomorrow, half a year later, a year later, it's your decision. If you run without a rest, the time will end quickly. But if you stop in the middle or backslide, it will last longer and you will feel it to be, to be tiresome. If you finish your struggle and go into the fourth level of faith or higher, it's more difficult to follow the desires of the flesh than spirit. It is much easier and happier to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit. I hope you will only follow the desires of the Holy Spirit, finish your struggle in your hearts quickly, and come into spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are some things you have to keep in mind to finish your struggle against the desires of the flesh. First, you have to obey as soon as you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to finish your struggle quickly? I'm telling you what you have to keep in mind to finish your struggle against the desires of the flesh. Then bear in mind that first you have to obey as soon as you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you ignore the voice, thinking maybe not this time, I'll obey next time, then the voice will become increasingly faint and finally disappear. As you keep on disobe disobeying, you might also create a wall of sin against God. On the other hand, if you just obey, as soon as you hear His voice, you can be guided by Him correctly. It does not take many years before you are able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit quickly. I urge you to have firm determination and do the following. In order to finish your struggle against desires of flesh quickly, secondly, you must not cease to pray. You must not cease to pray. Ceasing to pray is sin. Prophet Simon said, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray. Ceasing to pray is sin. Our Lord also say, 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 said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. But some of you are ceasing to pray and violating God's word. You are sinning. Those who pray without ceasing have a communication with God. So if there are in case of emergency, such as a dangerous, urgent, or difficult situation, they pray to God, and He will answer them, saying, Yes, I'm here. However, those who cease to pray, when they pray, God does not re respond that quickly. Why? They made a wall of sin by ceasing to pray. Communication with God has been disconnected for a long time, so God cannot answer right away. 
Say railroad tracks are disconnected, then it takes time to restore it. Likewise, one's communication with God is disconnected. Even though you call to God in emergency, God can respond right away. It's not like, Father, I got his son. You have to cry out to God for a long time to receive God's prompt answer again. How many times would the people of Israel and Egypt have cried out to God until God answered? How long would they have cried out to God? Communication with God could be reconnected after going through long hours of crying out. Not a day or two, not a week or two, not a year or two. You must not cease to pray. If you cease to pray, you can never go to a better dwelling place in heaven, and your soul cannot be prosperous. Only if you pray without ceasing for your business or something, God will answer you quickly when you cry out to Him. Prayer is like the energy to your spirit, just as you put gasoline in the car. If you stop praying, you cannot gain the fullness of the spirit, and the desires of the flesh that have been suppressed gain strength again. Thus, we have to pray fervently all the time to be full of the Holy Spirit. To finish your struggle against the desire of the flesh quickly, thirdly, you diligently have to change your feelings about the flesh. Please keep that in mind. This is real important. The reason why men of flesh follow the desires of the flesh is that they feel more comfortable that way. On the other hand, they feel it more difficult to live by the Word of God. This is a wrong kind of feeling. It means that they are being cheated by the enemy devil and Satan. In fact, it's much more comfortable and happier to follow the desires of the Holy Spirit. But why do men of flesh feel better when they follow the untruths? It's because they have the old habits in their bodies. As we accepted the Lord, we put off our old selves and put on the new selves and become new cre creations. But some still like their former way of life and follow it. They're like old wine is better than new one. Before we accepted the Lord, we followed the ways of the world. Ephesians 2, 2 to 3 says, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Here, what is it to follow the way of this world. It's obeying the enemy devil and Satan who are holding the power of the air and being instigated by them. It is not you. You're doing it at the instigation of the enemy devil and Satan. You formally walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sense of disobedience. In other words, those who disobey are under the control of these evil spirits. So you are dodging off. You made, you, you made, who made you do so? Holy Spirit, you have to worship in spirit and truth. But you turn your cell phone on and you'd like to check coming text messages and you'd even send text messages. Who made you do so? Holy Spirit? No way. It is the Spirit that is now working in the sense of disobedience. You're doing it at the instigation of the enemy devil and Satan, not on your own will. It is the same with ceasing to pray. These spirits let you cease to pray and let you stop praying and lure you to something else. They lure you to the things that you, your old self loved to do. They'll let you not pray of the spirit that is now working on the sense of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh. Before we know God, before we accepted the Lord, we were the same, including the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. 
these children will drink of the wine of God's wrath, and they will die eventually. They have nothing to do with God. They're not God's son children. They will drink of the wine of the wrath of God. That means death. To drink the cup of hell, as said, children of wrath. We will live indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind. We once did what we wanted, but not what the Holy Spirit wants. As long as we have these old habits, we feel more comfortable following the desires of the Spirit. Also, when we follow the desires of the flesh, we might get some gratification or pleasure too. Because they haven't tasted the Holy Spirit's desires and fullness, they follow the desires of the flesh and feel such life is happy for the moment. For example, if you enjoy worldly entertainments or rest instead of praying, you might feel comfortable for the moment. For those who tasted praying, praying is more pleasant and comfortable, but for others it is not so. But this is only momentary. After that period passes, you feel more afflicted in heart rather than satiated. The joy that was experienced disappears quickly, and you are left with the feeling of vanity. Therefore, if you have the feeling that is comfortable, stop praying and experience difficult praying, difficulty praying, then you have to change your feelings. You have to change your feelings and feel that it is uncomfortable to skip prayers. You have to feel happy and energized with, when you overcome tiredness with prayer. You should do the same with educating your children. You force your children to pray, but actually you shouldn't be doing that. Have a prayer meeting together with them and there let those who are ahead in faith lead them to receive grace and pray with joy and happiness. Just forcing them to pray is not the way it works. Teach them how to pray and let them, be, let them realize the benefits of praying so that they can pray voluntarily with joy and happiness. One day, two days, three days, as they go on like this, they will gradually realize the taste of prayer. Continue to help them reach the level of praying with a fullness and crying out to God. Finally, they will be getting into praying and let the opposite things become faint or disgust. If you just force your children to pray, 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 then they get afflicted. The same applies to their study. Also, if you pour out your temper when you get angry, you might feel relieved for a moment. But these people always have to get angry and fight with other people. How pitiful it is. If you get angry, you have to repent right away and feel sorry before God. But if you rather feel good about it, you could not cast off your hot temper. On the contrary, if you follow the desires of the Holy Spirit to understand and bear with others, you are at peace and happy. Once, twice, three times, then will feel comfortable. If you follow the truth in all things, you can have joy in the Holy Spirit. Colossians 5.18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you obey the rules, you have freedom. Do you understand? In the Old Testament times, those who violated the law were punished or put to death. Even today, those who follow the desires of the flesh always have to worry about whether or not they will fall into hell or experience some form of, of disaster. For these people, the Word of God feels like restraints and fearful lashings of what weeps. How difficult they must feel their life is. Any of you who feel your Christian life is hard to long here, then what do you have to do? You have to change yourself. On the other hand, if you cast off all the desires of the flesh and follow the desires of the Holy Spirit all the time, you will always enjoy freedom and peace. You will not be bound by the law. I have told you about this before. I don't remember when I repented for the last time. I only have a dim recollection. Maybe since 1990s or something, 
I have repented like, for I committed a sin. Please forgive me. I have no recollection of repenting my sin. You repent because you committed a sin, right? Father, I have sinned. Forgive me, please. But I haven't done anything wrong, so there is nothing to repent. So between God and me, there is absolute trust. So I am fully loved by God, and I am confident. You are filled with true joy, peace, and hope of heaven since you are filled with the Spirit. Wherever you are and where, whatever you do, you always sing praises. You are protected and blessed by God all the time according to the rules of His justice. I have never had a traffic accident. Ever since the opening of this church, I have no recollection of getting involved in a traffic accident, not a single one. I have always been protected. We never face any disasters or accidents. A form of darkness such as loneliness, worries, and fear cannot take hold of you. It's because the Holy Spirit will always walk with you. Numbers 12, 8 says, With him I speak mouth to mouth, even openly and not in dark, saying, And he beholds the form of the Lord as written, God had an intimate friendship with Moses. Men of God had an intimate relationship with God. For Moses, God spoke to him face to face. For the Apostle Paul, our Lord himself, came down and stood by him and spoke to him. Today's reading passes, Romans 8, 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. You should become the one who are qualified to call God, Abba, Father. Those people never commit the deeds of the flesh, not to mention sin leading to death. That's why they can call God Abba Father. Now I hope you will also become children who have close relationship with God the Father. God the Father has sent the Holy Spirit to gain such children. As I explained in many sessions, the secret of hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit is actually very simple. It's to cast off all untruths and heart and cultivate holy heart. If you become holy children who resemble God, you can have clear communication with Him. It's because the heart and mind become one. Whatever you have in mind, whatever you say, or whatever you do, you can do everything as God wants. I hope you will feel the joy of walking with God, having clearly established communication with the Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will become precious children who will reveal the great love and will of God, the Father, at the end time. Let's pray, thinking over today's